Venus. Like Mercury, uh, to determine the rotation of Venus, we had to bounce radar off of uh, the edge of the planet to measure how fast one side was moving towards us and how fast the other side was moving away. But in the case of Mercury, we had to do that because we couldn't see surface features because of its proximity to the Sun. Venus, we had to do it because, again, we can't see f surface features, but it's because Venus is covered by a very dense atmosphere and thick clouds, and we can't see through all of those clouds to the surface. So once again, radar to the rescue. And what we find is Mer Venus rather has a very uh, slow rotation rate, 250 Earth days for one rotation on its axis. And that rotation is backwards, backwards in the sense that it's not in the same direction that Venus orbits. Uh, from this point of view, Venus would be orbiting counterclockwise, but it rotates on its axis clockwise. Even more unusual is that uh, the time it takes to rotate on its axis is actually longer than the time it takes to go once around the Sun. It takes it about 220 or so days to go once around the Sun. So in a sense, a day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus. So uh, again, we've got this very odd uh, day-night cycle, uh, probably even odder than the one that we saw on Mercury. Much of what we know about Venus comes from spacecraft that have visited, and the Venera series uh, were sent by the Soviet Union, and there were a number of Venera spacecraft. Some were flybys, some went into orbit, but the most unusual were the landers. It actually landed on Venus. Now we'll see a little bit later what the surface conditions are on Venus. Uh, it's not a very hospitable place for spacecraft. And these two pictures that you see here, these are two images, and uh, you're seeing some of the spacecraft in the foreground here, and then beyond is the surface of Venus, and again, this lower image. You see some of the foreground for the spacecraft, and then the rest is actual Venus imagery. Though from the Venera landers, which did not last long, are our only direct images of the surface of Venus. Magellan was in the 1990s, I should have said Venera was in the 70s and 80s. Uh, Magellan, this was an orbiter. This was a NASA spacecraft, and this used radar to map the surface of Venus. Because again, the atmosphere, we couldn't actually see the surface. So this picture that you're seeing is based on radar imagery. That is not true color. But it is semi-based on the Venera, which showed that the atmosphere on Venus is so thick that pretty much most colors of light are filtered out, and the only thing that does come through is the red light. And so that's why they used uh, shades of red for the false color imagery. From the Magellan spacecraft, uh, we've learned quite a bit about the surface of Venus. And one of the things that we learn both from that and from the Venera, and this is another Venera image. Here you see the spacecraft in the foreground, 
and you see uh, the surface of Venus there, that is basalt, that is dried lava. Uh, the surface of Venus is pretty much this desolate looking place of like a giant lava plain you would find around a volcano. We do not see evidence of plate tectonics. Uh, one of the things that we look for are long mountain chains because we know on Earth with plate tectonics we have mountain building zones and so when you have a mountain building zone you get these long chains of mountains we do not see that on Venus we don't see that on any other planet besides Earth so that's a little surprising because Venus is essentially the same size as Earth we would expect its interior to be very similar to our own uh, but it does not seem to have the plate motion that we do. Surface of Venus. Uh, young, based on crater counts, that lava flow that obviously has covered the surface has to have been relatively recent. Now, astronomers have a very strange sense of time. So young, less than 500 million years old. So, uh, not necessarily young from your perspective, but anything less than 500 million years old is considered young astronomically. Some of the features we see on Venus include volcanoes. Uh, the mountains are volcanic mountains, so we'll modify this and say volcanic mountains. And these are due to hot spots. So again, no plate tectonics, but you do have hot spots. You do have those places in the crust that allow the magma to work its way up, and eventually it comes out of the volcano. And this image, this is a Magellan image, you see this lighter region here looks very much like lava, uh, even currently flowing out of this volcano. All we know for sure is it's less than 500 million years old, uh, but clearly uh, semi-active volcanoes on Venus. Coroni are these unusual looking features, sometimes called pancake features. And here you've got, for all intents and purposes, a failed volcano. The magma has pushed up, it's created this dome, volcano, uh, but it did not erupt. And so what happens is you get this dome-like feature because the magma is pushing upward. Eventually the magma recedes and that dome structure collapses and creates a bowl-shaped feature. So you get first the dome and then eventually it will collapse down and create a bowl. And those are called coroni. Ridges and cracks. You see all these little wrinkles on here. Um, as a planet cools and shrinks, uh, you get this stress or strain on the surface. And you get the formation of these wrinkles. So uh, here we see places where strain has occurred. This is considered tectonic, but not plate tectonic. And then we also get rift valleys, where as the surface cools, it splits, and you get the formation of this valley feature. Uh, not a rift zone like we have on Earth, but just a splitting of the surface, sort of like having dry skin. Uh, so uh, I always think of the ridges and cracks as being sort of like stretch marks, and rift valleys as being like having dry split skin 
in the winter time. So that's the surface of Venus, but what about its atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere, mostly carbon dioxide. When we talked about the formation of a planet's atmosphere, uh, carbon dioxide is largely from outgassing, either the slow release from rocks or the rapid release from volcanoes. So given the fact that Venus has volcanoes, uh, it's not too surprising that it's a carbon dioxide atmosphere. Little surprising is the atmospheric pressure. 90 atmospheres. Now in comparison, Earth, we have an atmospheric pressure of 1 atmosphere. Uh, we base that on sea level at a certain temperature that is defined as one atmosphere of pressure. So Venus 90 times Earth's atmospheric pressure. That is enough pressure to crush you. So uh, when you go to Venus definitely wear a pressure suit so you can withstand these high atmospheric pressures. So we've got carbon dioxide, which you can't breathe. You've got enough atmospheric pressure to crush you. So if that weren't bad enough, Venus has clouds of sulfuric acid. So when it rains, it rains acid. Now, what I have read is it evaporates before it hits the ground but uh, even just entering the atmosphere it won't be good because you're flying through sulfuric acid. So when I talked about the uh, Venera spacecraft and some of the uh, challenges of landing on the surface of Venus, we've got atmospheric pressures that are going to crush a spacecraft and we've got acid that's going to want to eat through the spacecraft. And then we've got insane temperatures. On Venus, the temperature is pretty much a constant 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't matter whether it's daytime or nighttime. It doesn't really change because these clouds basically hold in the heat. You know how on a cloudy night it tends to not get as cold as it does on a clear night. Well, as thick as the atmosphere is on Venus, uh, no heat can escape. So the reason why it gets so hot is essentially the greenhouse effect. On Earth, light from the Sun comes in, some of it gets reflected back to space, but most makes it down to the surface. And when it hits the surface, it gets converted into infrared radiation, heat. So the surface tries to radiate that heat. A lot of it goes off into space. Some of it gets trapped. And that's the greenhouse effect, the trapping of that heat. Well, in comparison, on Venus, light comes in. Now, it reflects a lot because of those thick clouds, but enough gets through to the surface. But when it tries to radiate that heat, very little goes off into space. Almost all of that heat gets trapped. So Venus is kind of a cautionary tale um, about the effects of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When you have too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, your temperatures are going to get insanely hot. And that is exactly what happened to Venus.